Welcome to Talking with the Experts. This is where we discuss great ideas to take your business to the next level. How do we know these ideas work? Well, it's because we're talking with business owners who are using these ideas. Business owners who have years of experience and expertise. All things business by business owners for business owners. And now, here is your host, Rose Davidson. Hi, I'm Rose Davidson from Talking with the Experts. I'd like to take this opportunity to thank Global Glamping Charities for their valued support. Global Glamping Charities, solving homelessness in all its forms. Reach out to them at globalglamping.org. A best-selling book can greatly boost your marketing efforts and establish you as the go-to expert in your field. In episode 436, Steve Kidd explains to us how we can do that. So the number one piece of um, everything you do with Amazon, but especially becoming a bestseller, is all about search engine optimization. Amazon is a search engine for people looking to buy things. So you need to set it up so that when people search for that thing, they find your book. Um, That's the number one piece of it. Then secondarily is the keywords and the categories so that Amazon knows what your book is about and knows where to place it and how to do it. Um, And then it's understanding Uh, the competition. Most people, when they do their first book, I did it too, so that's okay. Most people are like, well, this book is to help people, so I'm going to put it in self-help. Well, self-help is the most popular category on Amazon. You know, you're competing then against Oprah and Tony Robbins and and all of the big name multi-billionaires that are out there. Um, You'd have to sell a lot of books. Whereas in most people's case, when they're actually writing a self-help book, what they're probably writing is a transformational book or an inspiration. Talking with the Experts. Hello, welcome to Talking with the Experts. I'm your host, Rose Davidson from rosedavidson.com. Talking with the Experts is about all things business by business owners for business owners. You can find it on all good podcasting, streaming platforms and on YouTube. Today, my guest is Steve Kidd, and we're going to be discussing how to level up your business by becoming a best-selling author. Now, Steve is a best-selling author. He's a successful entrepreneur and a highly sought-after business coach and radio show host with a passion for helping others succeed. His mission in life is to bring attention to amazing heart-centered individuals and assist them in becoming successful authors and bestsellers. He believes that having a passion and love for what one does is the key to success and he is dedicated to guiding others through the challenges they may face on the path to achieving their goals. Welcome Steve and thank you so much for being here today. Thanks so much for having me Rose, I appreciate it. Oh my pleasure, my pleasure. How did you get into uh, doing what you're doing? It's an interesting um, you know way to to um, have a business. Well, you know, I mean, ultimately, I'm a marketing company with a strong publishing division. Uh, We've been a marketing company since 1988. Um, Early, early adopter in internet space. In fact, they didn't even call it the internet back when I was working in that space in marketing. (laughs) Um, And then in 2007, actually, my then wife and one of my youngest daughters uh, did a trip to go see the filming sites actually for the movie Twilight. um, And they blogged about it. And I helped them turn that book into or that blog into a book. Um, you know, and the, the rest is history. It became a best-selling book and we learned very quickly just how powerful in marketing being a bestseller is, uh, to the point where we made sure that all of our clients were it and eventually came to the place where, you know, now my whole company, that's what I do is help people with their messaging and their bestsellers and, and all those things that help up love you to your best. Wow. Amazing. Now, how, how can having a best-selling book, you know, boost our marketing uh, as a business owner? Sure, absolutely. So number one, bestseller is the number one influencer credential bar none. Uh, my medical doctors that have been doctors for years and years would tell you they've gotten more out of being a best-selling author than you know being a doctor in their field for as much as 20 years. So 
Um, you absolutely do need that. What I can tell you from a marketer standpoint is the term bestseller or bestselling author is the most powerful tagline you can put to any marketing you do. You know, whether it's the presenter at an event that is a bestselling author, or it be a product that you created that's based off of your bestselling book, um, your marketing will never reach its maximum potential if you don't have that bestseller and make sure people know that it's based off the bestseller. Mm. Interesting. And, um, you know, how do we, uh, again, you know, with the marketing and stuff, how do we then progress to be the go-to person in our particular niche or industry? Well, I mean, of course, obviously it helps if you um, actually do have something significant to share, but I think everybody really does. Um, You know, Becoming a bestseller is like graduating from medical school or building the foundation for a house. It's kind of the place you start. And then from there, you use that credential just like a doctor would. You know, they graduate from medical school and then spend the next decade learning how to actually be a doctor. Um, but they are from then on doctor so-and-so. And and that's where we really miss it is we don't take the credential that we've done and then build upon that for everything else we do. So, you know, people don't know what you've done. If you're not the one to tell them, they're not going to, you know, dig it out and see if you've done something really cool. <laughs> yeah. I it, it can be challenging though, to write a book. I mean, you may have lots of information up in your head, but it's often difficult to get it down onto paper in such a cohesive way that people can read it. Right. Well, what I like to always say is everyone should be an author. Almost no one is a writer. I've met some people that are amazing writers, but they're very few and far between. What I always recommend to somebody is write your book via interview. Do it via just talking to somebody. Share who you are with somebody else preferably somebody who knows how to interview you, but even if it's just talking to a friend um, and let that thing that you're the most passionate about in life, let it come out just like it does. Every time somebody brings up that subject, you always have a lot to say on it anyway. This is just doing it in a little bit more intentional manner. Mm. So what is, what what process, I mean, other than, you know, writing it down or recording it or, or doing whatever it is that, you know, you do to get to get the words out of your head and onto something that, you know, can be transcribed. How does, how do we find um you know the time the the motivation the you know whatever it takes to you know get it all down in in some sort of order well a friend of mine actually wrote a book that's called stop doing what you suck at and i think that's really the best answer to that question is is we all have a tendency especially when we're solopreneurs and had to do everything ourselves to hold on to that forever. And the truth of the matter is, is that the best way to get your words down, to get them edited, to get a cover made for you, all the different steps in becoming an author and then a best-selling author, you really should bring somebody in that that's what they're passionate about. You know, I mean, yeah, you could do your taxes yourself, but why would you when there are people that surprisingly actually get excited about doing taxes? There are people that it makes their day to figure out out where a comma goes in a sentence. Um, and so it's just so much better to, instead of having it be this arduous task, really, truly bring in the team, the people that are going to help you uh, be successful at the goal that you really should do. Mm. So in your um, publishing house, do you, um, uh, you know, what, what are the steps that someone might take if they come to you and they want to write a book? We start off everything that we do uh, with a strategy session that is going to be talking about who's the book for, what do they need, how can we best serve those people. Um, And then after we've identified that and also talked about, you know, something as simple as if you only had five minutes to share with that perfect person, what is the one thing you really have to tell them? And after we've kind of figured out where we're going, um, you know, then we go straight to an interview session. We schedule that um, about an hour to an hour and a half in each session. Um, I lead those and I just take the person through to encourage them, to get them talking, telling stories, telling that thing that they're passionate about anyway. That goes from there to a a story development editor. Um, A story development editor is huge. They're just so powerful because they can go through and both identify how things flow the best 
but also they can tell you, hey, here's what's missing. Here's some things you didn't even think about. This is what makes it from just words on a paper into a story. Um, and then from there, you can finalize your story, uh, have that edited again. You know, people who get excited about putting the commas in the right place, uh, develop, you know, have a cover, both the ebook front cover as well as the full cover for a print book, uh, you know, have that developed for you so that you can, um, you know, have a book that's ready to go. And then it's formatted for both ebook and print form. Um, and then the real magic sauce comes in where we do all the research to make sure that your book is structured and categorized right, that all the search engine optimization is right. Um, and we run the launch program. We have, we've done thousands upon thousands of people's books over the years uh, with 100% success rate of making people bestsellers every single time. Yeah, there's a, um, a code that people need to have if they want to sell their book internationally. It's an IS something N. Um, I can't remember what, the, what it is, but how do we go about getting one of those? I mean, do you do that for the mm -hmm. client? We do, we do do that on their behalf. ISBN numbers are for print books, um, and there are some nuances to it. We just take care of it for you, so you don't even have to worry about that. That's another one of those things you don't have to worry about. But um, in most cases, you would actually have to purchase separate ISBN numbers for separate countries. If you're going the route that I'm going to suggest to you, um, we do have the ability to be able to actually get you a single ISBN number for the single book um, that will be effective and, and spread across all of the, of the 13 different Amazon uh, websites that exist in the world. Oh, okay. So you publish on Amazon primarily or do you um, publish like for hard copy books? Well, they are hard copy books. So we do both ebook and print form um, or hardcover form. Um, we can help people with their audio book, which we strongly recommend to them. And we recommend that they be the one reading it. Um, we have the, the capability to do all of that. But I do very much strongly suggest um, this day and age, you want to go directly to Amazon. They do most definitely give preferential treatment to books that are published through them versus anywhere else. Um, and most importantly, though, you really want to own your book. And that's the secret of the publishing industry is the publishers, what they really want to do is own your book and your content. And, um, you know, no matter how big of a name the person is, if they go through a traditional publisher, um, they either have to get permission from that publisher to create a course off of the book, their material, you know, is their stuff. But now they signed away the ownership of that to them. Um, and in most cases, the publishers, unless they think they're going to make a lot of money off of that course, they won't let you. And so your course that's uh, that you've been teaching that you then wrote a book on, now you can't teach it anymore because the publisher now owns your course. Oh, how do you stop that from happening? Well, that's where you go directly to Amazon. Um, you do the self-publishing route with Amazon. Um, and uh, then you have a contractual relationship, meaning your email address is the one that Amazon has on file and knows is associated with that book. And then you retain 100% of the rights and 100% of the royalties to your book. Right. And, you know, there are um, a couple of websites that I'm aware of that you can actually uh, write your book if you don't do it through Amazon. Um, I can't remember what they're called, but um, you write your book and then they submit it for you. It, it's an online um, space. Do you recommend those? Well, there are several that do that. And here's the biggest problem with that. And, and hear me, um, I don't think they have any malicious intent, so I'm not trying to say anything bad about them. But the problem is, is that, that when they do it for you, they log into an account that is an email address that that company owns, that Amazon then has a contractual relationship with the owner of that email address and Amazon. And as we know, you know, especially after we've gone through COVID, you know, companies that have been around forever, they go out of business. Um, it happens all the time. Uh, Amazon doesn't know you as the author. They know the person who they have the correspondence via email with. That's who owns that book. Um, author is literally a form field. You know, that's where if you wanted to use a pen name, you could make up any old name you want to. Um, and unless you used a 
celebrity's name. Like if you said you were Oprah Winfrey, they would flag that. But, um, you know, beyond things like that, you can be anybody you want to. Amazon doesn't care because it's just a form field you filled out. Mm, makes that makes a lot of sense uh, a question that i've got is that um and i've just lost my train of thought then isn't that terrible um doesn't matter we'll just continue on um yeah. now amazon um oh yes how does amazon um you know how do you get to number one spot in amazon that was my question um you know you find people that are, you know, pushing their book, pushing their book, pushing their book, um, you know, through social media and get people to buy it for 99 cents. How does that work? You know, is it really successful and does it take much to get to a number one spot? So the number one piece of um, everything you do with Amazon, but especially becoming a bestseller is all about search engine optimization. Amazon is a search engine for people looking to buy things. So you need to set it up so that when people search for that thing, they find your book. Um, that's the number one piece of it. Then secondarily is the keywords and the categories so that Amazon knows what your book is about and knows where to place it and how to do it. Um, and then it's understanding uh, the competition. Most people, when they do their first book, I did it too, so that's okay. Most people are like, well, this book is to help people, so I'm going to put it in self-help. Well, self-help is the most popular category on Amazon. You know, you're competing then against Oprah and Tony Robbins and, and all of the big name multi-billionaires that are out there. Um, you'd have to sell a lot of books. Whereas in most people's case, when they're actually writing a self-help book, what they're probably writing is a transformational book or an inspirational book or possibly even a Christian book, you know, depending on what they're writing. And so there are different categories that are not in self-help that are actually where those belong. Um, so that's a, a big piece of it. And then as far as the actual um, algorithm, if you will, of Amazon, Amazon's algorithm is based on um, legitimately how many people purchase the book. Now, they don't care if you paid $0 for the book or a million dollars for the book. It's about the book that's a number two versus the book that's number three sold more copies of the book to individuals, meaning in uh, unique email addresses over the course of that time period. Now, Amazon does update hourly. They're about um, eight to 12 hours behind in the US. And if you're in other countries, it's about 36 hours behind. Um, so if you were looking in Australia, for example, um, you know, that would be the reflection of about a day and a half ago of what was actually selling in Australia when you look at their bestsellers list. But it still is a legitimate list. And, um, you know, it's just a little bit behind for the mechanics of how their software works. But um, that's going to be the only list that's statistically driven that's based off of sales. Um, and so that is most definitely the uh, the book that you want to do. So you have to set yourself up and then you have to have a marketing program that puts those sales in in the proper way so that your book rises to the ranks versus being like, you know, I mean, statistically, the average book sells 40 copies of the book ever in its entire lifetime. So, you know, you want to have a different marketing program than that. Mm, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. I'm, I've never really understood how the algorithms work for, for, for doing that. But yeah, that it does make sense. Now, you have helped thousands of people get their message out into the world. Um, and, you know, obviously, it's impacted a lot of people. How um, have you been able to do that, uh, you know, with, with vision, I guess? Well, I mean, it boils down to the heart and soul and core of what I believe. Um, in most cases, when you're talking to a traditional publishing company, they are interviewing you whether or not you're worthy to be on their platform. I very strongly believe that everybody has a purpose, um, that uh, rather than looking down on people because you know, we don't understand or their purpose may seem smaller to us than ours is, they still have a reason and a purpose to be on this earth. And, and often, um, you know, like my, eight, my granddaughter, who was at the time eight, when she wrote her book, often the greatest things come out of some of the things that come out of those little people's mouths. So it isn't about that. It's about everybody needs to share their message with the world. And I'm here to empower everyone 
to share that thing that is them um, and maximize who they are out into the world. Mm. And I guess, you know, um, cost, you know, cost as in, um, you know, finances or cost in time, you know, what, what is the average time to, to take to write a book? I mean, I know someone take, someone, some people take years and years and years, but if you were going to do a book about business, um, I don't know, marketing or something, what would be, you know, a really good time, I mean, to write a book? A weekend, a week, a month? Well, I do have a program that'll help you write your book in in a three-day weekend. Um, And that is very doable. And I've done it with a whole bunch of people. Um, Beyond, you know, a a lead program where I'm helping you get through that. um, If your book takes you more than 30 to 90 days, um, that means that there are other things outside of the doing the book that are happening in your life. Now, I'm not necessarily meaning it's bad things. I mean, it could be you met the love of your life and fell in love. You got married. You had a, a new baby. You know, I mean, stuff happens in our lives and some of them are really great. And that's going to, you know, change the time frame of things. But, you know, if you go beyond the 90 day point, that means that there's something else. Um, and sometimes it is things, you know, we're just not prioritizing it or, or what have you. Um, but really, that's all the longer it really should take. And we've done a lot of books in 30 days and, you know, in a couple of weeks and in things like that. Um, it's just about having a system and really running the person through that system versus that person staring at a blank paper and hoping that words are going to appear on it. Yeah, that's that's my challenge is staring at that blank page and think, how do I get all that information down on that bit of paper and, you know, make it so that people will want to read it? <laughs> well, and that's why we always suggest interview is because then the first piece of paper that you look at, you know, on the screen, whichever way you look at it, um, is already going to have a whole bunch of words and a whole bunch of your stories. And you can say, like my friend Cheryl said, when I did that interview with her, uh, one of our authors, she said, you know, for the first time, after years of people telling me I had to write a book and tell my story, I finally see my words and my voice on paper and I finally get it. And just from that little session, I think we only did about a half an hour and then she wrote the rest of her book, but that gave her what she needed to be able to really understand what her voice was and what her point and purpose was. Mm. Um, Steve, where can people find you if they want to know more or indeed work with you? So my main website is thrivingbestsellers.com. But what I'd like to do for everybody that's listening, I love giving people free gifts. Um, If you go to ongoingwealthguide.com, and the reason why I went with the name Ongoing Wealth Guide, ongoingwealthguide.com, is because your book is going to be the foundational element of your capability to generate money. So I'm not talking about, you know, necessarily your bank account is always going to be up. Sometimes, you know, we buy a new house and the bank account goes down. But the concept of abundance is that you have a mechanism in place to continue to generate that. Um, And that free guide is going to walk you through the five elements of that. I've even included in that the write your bestseller in one hour workshop that I've done that um, I have a lot of people, they just from that one hour, they write their whole book based off of that. Um, and that's yours for free just by going to ongoingwealthguide.com. No, oh, well, thank you for that. That's absolutely amazing. I'm going to have to go and have a look at that. <laughs> Steve, um, can people find you anywhere else other than um, uh, uh, on your website? Well, and I'm all across social media, you know, Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, uh, you know, YouTube, you name it. Um, Steve Kidd, S T E V E K I D D, or Ask Steve Kidd is what it is on Twitter and LinkedIn and, and and all of those. But yeah, I'm, you know, any place where social media is. And then of course, if you go to Amazon, um, you know, I have 20 international number one international bestsellers myself, um, that you can find there. Um, actually, if you go and you look on Amazon, you'll only find 16 under my name because the other four are written by a pen name. But um, but they're all there. There is actually 20 of them. Um, wow, but, that's uh, amazing. Yeah. yeah, well, I've got actually five more that I'm working on right now. One that I just finished up last night that I'm really looking forward to putting out. Oh, I'm going to have to go and have a bit of a squeeze, I think. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 
Steve, it's been an absolute pleasure. If you were to uh, give someone advice, if they were thinking of writing a book, what would you give them? Absolutely. The thing we have to understand is somebody's waiting on you. Somebody made a bad choice yesterday, last week, last month, last year, because they just didn't know any better. There is very likely somebody that's sitting in front of their computer on Google, searching desperately, maybe even crying for something that is difficult to them that may be super simple for you. Doesn't mean that it's necessary. I mean, we could talk about, you know, doing dishes and it could be very difficult for somebody. Doesn't necessarily mean we're talking about brain surgery or curing cancer. Whatever that thing is for you, there's somebody that needs to know that and they're waiting and they won't have the answer that they need from you until you are the one who shares it with the world. And there's no better way to share it than to not just write a book, but be a bestseller. Oh, love that. Uh, I do have one final question. Does the book have to be uh, about business to work with you or can it be a personal story? Oh, no. I have worked with literally every kind of book you can imagine. I've done children's books. Uh, of course, nonfiction books. Um, I've done fiction stories. Um, I've even worked with people who have um, adult books that that they've written. So you name the genre. I've I've worked with everybody, and the process works just the same. No matter what the book's about, um, we have the program to be able to make it rank for you. Wonderful, Steve. Thank you so much for joining with me today and sharing your great wisdom. I love it, and um, I'll talk to you again really soon. Thanks so much, Rose. You've been listening to Talking with the Experts, hosted by Rose Davidson. Make sure you have a look at our back catalogue over at talkingwiththeexperts.com and be sure to subscribe to our podcast so you don't miss out on any episode. We look forward to your company next time. Talking with the experts.